Yeah, I'm breaking a few laws of physics out here. I'm not supposed to be able to do this out here in the woods. Well, with a fractured sternum, bad back, busted up shoulder, you know. So the companies want, want assets, not liabilities for employees, right. you know. And you can't do any lifting. That, yeah. They don't want you. So. Yeah. That's about the last thing I'm able to do. Hmm. You know, I, I was a machinist. I didn't necessarily have anything to do with the auto industry. Uh -huh. The auto industry goes down, you got 700,000 people just in southeastern Michigan alone, so unemployed. Yeah. You know, the company I worked for, we, we made parts for Sea Ray boats and Tierra yachts. And, so at one point we had about 70 employees, I think they have six now. Bus business is open and closed, you know. So some of them pay pretty good, you know. I mean, it's not necessarily the employee's fault that they lose the job right. and the company closes down. It's just economics, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Especially being a machinist, you know, the machines I run, they predated World War II. In fact, my dad applied for a job at the same company mm -hmm. and they wouldn't hire him because they said he was too young because mm -hmm. all the machines were old. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. If I can do this, I can, I can do business. So stand on the street corner holding a sign. You know, and finally got enough money to get the equipment. I, I went out and got it. How long did it take you? About, about a year and a half. Uh huh. And the solar panel also? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I couldn't run the equipment without the solar panel. Mm -hmm. I seen a picture of a clock. Much like that one there. Mm -hmm. Only, you know, 36 inches tall. I like that. So I sent away for the plans, got a scroll saw, and started cutting. It took me a year and a half to figure out how to cut. Lots of trial and error. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I found out the wood had to be dried. You could, you can't just go down to the lumber yard and buy the wood and mm -hmm. expect to make anything. Mm -hmm. You know, the wood has to be seasoned properly. Mm -hmm. you know, every time I tried cutting something, you know, wood would warp, and bind, and break. And it was frustrating. You know, finally, Finally figured out what it was what it was all about. Mm -hmm. Took off from there. Well, that was about thirty years ago. Thirty years ago. Yeah. Wow. So you've been doing this for thirty years. Yeah. Wow. Once I got that clock done, I had something something to be proud of. Oh wow. I, I've had a couple orders from other people. And once they get the product, they're tickled to death. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. And that's worth more than any. Any dollar amount to me, you mm -hmm. know, as long as the customers are happy. Right. Yeah. You know? When I first got out here, there was like 18 people scattered throughout the woods here. And a lot of them are opportunistic, you know, they see something, they're going to take it, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Well, there's three of us right now. Mm -hmm. Wow. It used to be about 18. There's a lot of people. And then what changed? We come in with the Greenway. And, mm -hmm. you know, some people went to jail. Some went to the hospital. And others just moved down. You know. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I couldn't have any of this out here. Couldn't even have a tent. Uh huh. Yeah. Wow. And do, so, do you feel safer now that there's less people, or yeah. was it safer oh, yeah. with a bigger group? Yeah, look, look, less people. Yeah. Less people is better. Even, even a year and a half ago, you know, things disappeared out of here. And so I tell people, I could, I could be making some very different choices right now, you know. Mm -hmm. and the cops in Greensboro could be looking for me. Yeah. I don't want that to happen. Right. I'm fortunate enough to know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Many people don't have that. They don't even have a plan on how they're going to get out of homelessness. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't imagine couldn't imagine being like that, you know. I figured by next spring I should, I should be well, well off getting out of here. Mm -hmm. Before I move up out of here, I have to have just a little more equipment, and I want to have at least four, at least four months of money to back, you know. Because once I move out of here, that's a transition period. You know, I'm setting up shop, 
changing right. it, you know, addresses, business forms, all you know, all of that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm not paying Duke Energy now. You know, I don't I don't want to pay Duke Energy later either. Yeah. Wow. I always, always gotta keep the mind working. Yeah. What I'd like to do is teach other people how to do this. Mm -hmm. so, there have been maybe one or two studies where the stroke victims come in learn how to operate the scrolls on. Gets gets your body moving to the back. Mm -hmm. you know. Wow. So I got to think about where I go, you know, set up for handicapped people and wheelchairs and all that, right. you know, set up, set the equipment up for them. Wow. Yeah, well, you know, if, if I can teach, if I can teach 20 people how to do this, I'd be happy. <laughs>